Okay, so our first real job of assembly is to put the bearings back in the uh, in the uh, gearbox uh, housing, gearbox uh, casing. Um, and what I've done is I've heated up the casing. It's now really hot. It's been in the barbecue. You can use the oven to get it nice and hot to expand it. And I've put the bearings, the new bearings have been in the freezer to cool them, to shrink them. Um, and and hopefully they will now go in without too much trouble. I'm not going to use bearing lock because I've, I've tested them and both bearings are pretty tight fit in the, uh, uh, in the shell. So we shouldn't need bearing lock. So the first thing I've got, I've got the uh, lay shaft and it's got the inner race of the the roller bearing uh, attached to it and here is the roller bearing it's all covered in frost because it's been in the freezer i'm going to fit it so that uh, the, the uh, writing is outwards because i think that's the convention so that's going th just on there and then hopefully i'm going to pop this into the shell and i'm hoping down, come out. I'm hoping that without too much trouble it will decide to go in but of course it's not going in. I'm going to give it a tap. I don't want to tap it too much on that uh, because uh, it's, a, it's a roller bearing it won't take. You need to tap it around the outside. I'm working fast around the out outer rim okay so i know i've got a there we go there phew and that is now uh, fully home yeah and we've got a nice nice bearing there that, that that took a lot more effort than i was anticipating so let's try the uh let's try this uh um, the main output bearing that goes on the uh, main shaft certainly that bearing was much tighter than I anticipated and again it's been in the freezer I'm going to fit it again with the lettering on the outside I've got the um, I'm going to try just dropping it in to begin with Be so careful. There, so I've got one. I'm trying to get it so it's straight. If it's not, if, it, if it's not straight, there's no way it's going to go in. Again, you have to make sure. That this is properly fully seated otherwise again when you tighten up the main shaft you know everything will seem fine but when you tighten up the main shaft then uh, you know if it's half a thou then everything will tighten up phew crikey it was a bit of a struggle but i think we're in uh, both bearings in much more of a struggle than i was anticipating i thought they'd drop in when I'd heated this up, I mean, this is still very hot. Yeah, that's too hot to touch still. And then the, I put the uh, bearings in the freezer to shrink them, but uh, yeah, whew. anyway, we're in. And I'm pretty sure that we've got them seated, you know, and they're all okay. Phew. You know, we need to get them fully seated. Nice, you know, make sure they're fully home properly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good. Whew. That was quite a job. But anyway, <laughs> that's done. Tick box. Well done. The main thing is to hammer on the outer ring of the bearing, not the, uh, you know, not not on the inner ring of the bearing, or in the case of the lay shaft on the actual uh, rollers, because of course we've got a roller bearing. I think you can see that that we've got rollers on the left, as opposed to the ball bearings on the right. Um, but yeah, you, you want to hammer on the outer ring. So I've got two 
uh, I've got two box spanners which are just the right diameter because they're big enough uh, to go on the outer ring of the bearing but small enough you know not to interfere not to hit on the casing so uh, that that was uh, you know, sort of happy uh, in, in both cases that I had something that was just big enough to go on the outer ring you never want to hammer on the inner ring Hmm, I don't, I'm just trying to think if there's an alternative way of doing that, but uh, yeah, because that was, uh, that wasn't pretty, but uh, I mean, they're in. Maybe I should have just got the case a lot hotter, but uh, I wasn't expecting them to be that, that difficult, that tight, that was the problem. Anyway, job done, whatever the case. Okay, so we've got those two bearings in, um, and they were really, really tight, so much tighter than I would anticipated. And of course, if you ever wanted to get this uh, lay shaft bearing out again, then I don't know how you do it. Because if you remember, when we took the old one out, we simply heated the case very hot, turned the case upside down, banged it on the bench so that then the bearing fell out. Well, that's in so tight that I'm sure that method won't work. So anyway, I rang Ashley the Andover Norton make these cases uh, and a few things he said he thought that they were machined to the minimum size um, uh, they're very accurately, accurately machined he said but uh, you know he thought that um, maybe that was the case he's going to have a word with the workshop um, uh, who, who, who tend to fit them and see see what they say uh, he also said that when they first made these cases, they used to machine them like using, I, I don't know, a sort of standard method. And every time that little um, um, bit of um, alloy between the two bearings would would fracture. So they've had to use a different machining method, method like a CN, some sort of very accurate CNC method to machine them so that doesn't crack. Um so uh, anyway, I don't know. All I know is that they're in very, very tight. Oh yeah, he also said that he did know some people who made like a puller to actually get this bearing out if they ever needed to. Uh, because sometimes even with the original ones, you know, turning the thing upside down, whacking it, they don't come out. So it, you know, it is possible to make some sort of fabricate some kind of puller to pull that inner race, uh, outer race of the um, lay shaft bearing out if you ever need to. No, anyway, that's all I can say. Uh, if I hear anything more from uh, from Ashley or anybody, I'll, I'll let you know.